Hello everyone, my name is Daniel and I'm a programmer and an artist. This video is about how you can use the build roof modifier for my geometry node assets. To use build roof we will need a flat layout of where the roof should be. To start with let's add a plane and on the plane I will add the build roof modifier. Then I will assign it a material from the modifier panel. I want to update this to just use the objects material eventually but for now um, that's how it works. Resolution adds additional loop cuts along the length of the roof. Before we do anything else, there are some settings that are best used as attributes, so let's create two vertex groups. We will name them height and direction. Then in the modifier settings, we will select those vertex group for the height ratio and direction properties. This allows us in edit mode to assign or remove faces from the direction group, which will rotate the roof by 90 degrees. And then we can also assign different weights to the height group, which will make different sections of the roof have a steeper or shallower pitch. Height scale is identical to the height ratio property. Uh, generally, you will use one of those as an attribute, and the other will just be a global scaler to change the height of all of the roof sections in your roof. Overhang controls how far the roof extends beyond the edges of the face that it was built on, and shape makes the roof either concave or convex. You'll have to adjust the resolution setting to get the number of points in the, in the curve of the roof that you need. Checking solidify will add a rim and back faces to the roof. The thickness setting controls the thickness of that solidify. And then the underside material is applied to the rim and the backside faces of that solidified part of the roof. The gable wall object should be a wall template like the ones used by the build walls modifier. I'll just select this one that I made for the build walls video. And that will fill in the ends of the roofs with a triangular sort of wall shape. UV name is the name of the UV map that will be added to the object, and the UV scale lets you change the size of textures on your roof. Checking output curves will add additional geometry to the object, which can be used by additional build roof modifiers that you could add to this object. I'll cover those in the next videos. Checking the fast mode option is good for previewing while you're building your roof, especially if you're making a large and complex roof, because it skips all of the slow boolean operations while still giving you a good idea of where the surface of the final roof will be located. Once the roof is looking the way you want it, you can resize and move around and duplicate faces to shape the roof how you want it. Roof sections that are placed close together will join and make one piece in the final roof, and it typically works best if the roofs all start slightly apart from each other and you let the modifier join them together. When the footprint meshes overlap that can cause some problems so just move the one edge outside of the piece it's supposed to join to and then the modifier will take care of extending it over to the to match up with the roof. If you have two parts that are close together but you don't want them to join um, you may need to separate those parts into two separate objects and then remember to use the direction and height vertex groups to fine-tune the shape that you're trying to make. And that's about it for the build roof modifier. Um, there are additional modifiers that we can add to this stack to take the way the roof looks even further. I'll cover those in the next few videos. The build roof modifier does have limitations. While it can make a variety of roofs, they will all have gable ends. It cannot make a roof that slopes on all four sides. And the footprint of each part of the roof must be roughly rectangular. Um, it can't handle circles or ingons, anything like that. Also note that the modifier makes use of booleans, and the booleans in Blender can be a little bit finicky, especially if two vertices are like exactly on top of each other, or a vertex lands perfectly on an edge. So you might have to tweak your positions just by a tiny amount if you have errors that are caused by the boolean nodes. Anyway, in the description I have a bunch of links. You can visit my website where there are more details about all of my modifiers. I have a Discord server that you're welcome to join, and there are links to where you can purchase my geometry node assets if you'd like to do that. And that's all I've got for this one. Thanks for watching.